Hello and welcome to Breaking Down, the series where we analyse a Fire Emblem unit from a gameplay perspective. Today we are taking a look at the adopted son of Lord Lenato, Ash. Whilst this series is not focused around plot, there is always a chance for spoilers and certain elements of the game and its structure and story will inevitably be mentioned, so if that is a concern for you, feel free to give it a miss. Also, where relevant, this is considering the maddening difficulty on a regular new game file with no exploits or excessive grinding. Ash starts out in the Blue Lions. This means that if you start out with them, you will have him as a part of your roster from Chapter 1 onwards. For any other house, he will need to be recruited. Like the majority of the cast, if you are able to get his support up to a B rank, he can ask to join your house on any of the days following this point. Alternatively, Ash's recruitment requirements are Lances and Charm, and should these be at a sufficient level, which vary based on your support level with Ash and are shown on screen now, you will be able to successfully ask him to join your house during Monastery Exploration. If you are using female Byleth, hitting these requirements can be an option worth consideration if you have been raising your Lance ranks in order to go down a Pegasus Knight route, since Byleth's Charm can be fairly rapidly inflated through successful tea parties. This is worth bearing in mind, especially if you have other characters who you want to recruit who may be the alternative targets of gifts, mission assistance, or monastery activities. Whilst we discuss Ash's recruitment, it is worth briefly touching on his paralogue battle, which is shared with Catherine. The reward from this paralogue is the Shoes of the Wind, which is three houses variant of the boots, a stat boosting item which increases movement by one, making it very valuable and a desirable reward. Only one of Ash or Catherine is required to be able to begin this paralogue, which is available from chapters 9 to 11. Since in both Black Eagles routes, Catherine cannot be recruited by this point, Ash will be your only way of accessing this paralogue, so recruiting him here can be very desirable even if you don't intend to use him in the long run. Another odd aspect of Ash is that he is one of the only units who will briefly leave your party after the time skip in both the Silver Snow and Verdant Wind routes, meaning he's unavailable for chapters 13 and 14 and can be recruited back to your side by defeating him in battle during chapter 15. It's a strangely common misconception that he must be defeated with Byleth in order to re-recruit him, and it's one that I previously believed to be true too, but it isn't. You can defeat him with anybody to bring him back to your side. Ash's personal ability is Lockpick, allowing him to open doors and chests without the use of a key. Unfortunately, the design of the game really limits this from being anything more than an extremely minor convenience. You see, keys of both types can be purchased from the shop at any point in the game, and the shop in three houses can be accessed from the preparation screen where you can see the map and any chest that may be on it, so even if you don't have any keys available to you, you can buy them from there once you realise you will need them and give them to whichever units you desire. Furthermore, chest keys are very cheap, and gold in three houses is beyond plentiful, being in a massive overabundance most of the time. The number of chests in the game is also quite limited, so even in the long run this will not really benefit you. The only time you may struggle to afford keys is in the very early game, literally the first two or three chapters, where you will be kitting everybody out with weapons and equipment and battalions, promotion seals, etc. and may not have amassed much gold yet, however, as a final nail in the coffin, every chest up until chapter 6 has a corresponding close by enemy holding a chest key which they drop upon their defeat and from here onwards any money struggles of any kind will be long behind you. Lockpick could have had some useful utility as has been seen in past games in the series, but it really does seem like Three Houses takes every possible step to make it as redundant and unnecessary as possible. Whilst it doesn't provide any negative effects and can potentially be useful in a pinch if it slips your mind to check for chests or buy keys before the map starts, it does mean his personal ability is something that really doesn't benefit him or your team in an ideal scenario. Ash does not have any crests, meaning any relic weapons or relic equipment he uses will deal 10 damage to him with each use, and he also gets no special benefits or combat arts from using any relic weapons of his own. This isn't a huge deal, crests mostly vary from being a minor help to a minor hindrance, but it is worth bearing in mind if you did want to give Ash a relic. Moving on to look at Ash's skill spread, it is very neutral, with very little moving off of the baseline. All of his ranks start at the minimum of E with two exceptions, a D rank in bows and an E plus in axes. These two areas also house his only strengths at the beginning, although he does hold a budding talent in lancers which will turn into a strength given enough tutoring. On the reverse of this, Ash does only hold one weakness in the reason skill, so outside of this it won't be too hard to raise any of his skills to any desired levels for certifications or ability unlocks. Taking a look at Ash's base stats, they are… well, we will be kind and say they're unremarkable at best. 
A base strength of 8 ties for the lowest amongst physical units. Other units do have lower, but these are pretty dedicated majors, such as Lysithia or Merian or Linhart. Whilst this strength is shared with quite a few other physical units, these generally either have tools to compensate, such as additional damage from personal abilities like Bernadetta or Lauren's, utility such as Ignatz with his rallies, or are generally considered fairly poor early game units such as Ingrid. The growths don't really help here either. With a strength growth of just 35%, you will be gaining on average one point of strength every three levels. Once again, this is joint lowest in the game amongst the non-magic based units. Going through every stat individually would take longer than necessary to get the point across, but it's fair to say Ash struggles in several key stats, notably the aforementioned strength alongside HP, defense, and charm, the latter of which really makes you wonder why charm is one of his recruit requirements. Combined, these can regularly lead Ash to struggling to both output and take damage. Now there is one important stat where Ash does a better job of holding his own, and that is speed, which can help him avoid being doubled, However, the threshold to avoid the doubling in Maddening can be so high that even here he can still struggle, especially when you consider that he has difficulty in offsetting weapon weight due to his low strength. But so far, this is all hypothetical and theory and numbers. What about actually using Ash? Well, Ash's base ranks give him access to Curved Shot from the get-go, which can help output some safe chip damage, and this combat art is essentially the only way you will have to deal completely safe damage against mages early on, which can be helpful. The combat art isn't unique to Ash, and other units will be able to access it very quickly, but more of them is always nice and having it from the start with no investment is handy. Ash's first promotion should be looking at Fighter, upon reaching level 5. The additional strength is extremely necessary, plus with the strengths lying in axes and bows, it is the easiest and most natural choice to class into. Whilst Ash doesn't have many skill strengths, they are in quite handy areas for his intermediate classes. Upon reaching level 10, there are two classes that Ash will always want to master. First up is Brigand for the Deathblow ability, which provides plus 6 might whenever Ash initiates combat, which can be extremely helpful to supplement his damage on the player phase. Brigand will require a D plus in Axes to be able to gamble the certification, with a C guaranteeing it, which should be more than attainable given the boon and the E plus starting rank. Personally, I would recommend going here first, since the extra damage both from the class and from Deathblow is extremely beneficial to get sooner rather than later. The other class which you will want to pursue at this stage is Archer, which once again should be an easy class for Ash to qualify for. Mastering this gives hit plus 20, greatly increasing consistency and reliability through higher hit rates. Mastering these two classes is standard for most physical attackers, so this isn't anything out of the ordinary, and with Ash's boons falling where they do, there is absolutely no reason not to grab these, especially because he's a male so he doesn't have Pegasus Knight or anything else that may distract him from these goals at this point in time. From here, there are two main directions I would recommend you could go in order to get the most out of Ash's combat, depending on how you want Ash to contribute to your team. The simplest and most straightforward of these is to make use of Ash's bow proficiency to take him down the path to Sniper, which requires a bows. The main benefit of this is to master the class and gain access to Hunter's Volley, a powerful combat art which will always attack twice in succession. This gives Ash some solid kill potential on the player phase, especially with the option to go for a killer bow with a crit battalion. This is not anything exclusive to Ash, pretty much any physical unit will be competent in this role and probably performing it slightly better than Ash will, however it is still a valid contribution and can help thin out enemies on the player phase, and is a notable help against flyers or flying monsters. One of the biggest draws of this path is that it is extremely low investment, essentially all Ash needs is A bows or B plus if you're happy to chance the qualification, and then he qualifies for Sniper and sits there for the rest of the game, you don't need to invest any more into him. The other option for Ash from a combat point of view is to make use of his axe strength and his budding talent in Lances and go down a path towards Wyvern Lord. This will give him more mobility and better all around combat, especially on the enemy phase, however it lacks the raw power and kill potential of Hunter's Volley that is provided by Sniper. One potential avenue with the Wyvern Lord route is to acquire Wrath and Vantage to allow Ash to enemy phase. Vantage is acquired from mastering the Mercenary class available at level 10 with a C Sword rank, although it can be gambled at D+. This will require a reasonable level of investment, but since Brigand and Archer are quite low investment for Ash, this should be very attainable. Wrath requires mastering the Warrior class, which has a skill check of A in Axes, although once again you can go a little lower if you are happy to chance it. 
With the strength in this area, this is definitely achievable for Ash at a reasonable point in the game. The Wrath Vantage combo is quite a common tool for enemy phasing since if the unit is below half health, it allows them to attack first and have a massively boosted crit rate. Once again, making use of this is not unique to Ash by any means and a lot of units will be able to, potentially again, slightly better than Ash would, but it's still a valid way in which he can contribute to your roster. If doing this, you will want to make sure that Ash is equipped with a killer weapon to boost his crit rate even higher. Ideally, you would also want a crit inflating battalion, however, when we consider we will be moving Ash into a flying class and his authority is nothing special, he will struggle to be able to attain one. However, the relevant Empire, Kingdom or Alliance Wyvern Co, depending on your route, may be attainable for a small boost at C rank. You could also make use of a crit ring to further increase his crit rate, as well as the crit plus 10 skill for the relevant weapon type, preferably axes in this case. From this point, Ash is free to take advantage of these skills in Wyvern Rider until level 30, where he is free to transition to Wyvern Lord. Just make sure to keep an eye on his flying ranks as well as his other skills to make sure that he is clear to certify. As with most units, when you use the Wrath Vantage combo, you may want to use some gambits to assist Ash when in combat. Notably, Blessing can be helpful to help Ash reach the threshold to activate Wrath Advantage, and Retribution can allow him to counterattack from any range, allowing him to basically wipe out a lot of enemies on the enemy phase. This overall makes Ash into a competent enemy phase unit with Wyvern Lord and lets him take advantage of the class's mobility, innate axe fair, and increased damage. I think both of these are valid options for Ash, and which you prefer will largely revolve around how you want to utilize him and what your team needs more. Personally, I prefer going down the sniper route as unfortunately the wyvern path requires more investment than I feel a unit of Ash's caliber warrants. There may be some people wondering why Bow Knight is not in consideration since the Bow Boon would obviously help him reach this goal, and with it being a masterclass it looks very appetizing. The biggest issue that Ash faces is his kill potential, and Bow Knight doesn't offer anything too helpful in this regard. Sniper offers Hunter's Volley, and Wyvern Lord offers a higher strength class modifier, primarily uses the highest damage weapon type with its innate axe fair, and the required skills intertwine nicely with Warrior for an enemy phase build which outputs a lot of damage through crits. Bow Knight is best utilized on units who already have the kill power built into their kit and can take advantage of the movement and range. Leone is a prime example of this thanks to her access to point blank volley and even in these scenarios, it is often very debatable whether it is a better option than other classes. Whilst it isn't the worst option on Ash, I would definitely choose the other classes discussed over it in this scenario. Normally, I would briefly touch on a unit's magical potential, but between the base magic, the growth, the reason bane, and the spell list, does anything really need to be said? Don't do it. The final thing to mention before wrapping this up is that if you do want to use Ash but are concerned his combat may not be up to snuff, you can always make him a dancer, just make sure to raise his charm early through tea parties and potentially golden apples from the greenhouse since it will struggle to grow by itself. I generally try to keep these pretty grounded in the unit itself, discussing their own strengths and weaknesses independent of anybody else, however I think his usefulness in relation to other units is important to touch on since it is such a focal point of any discussion around Ash as a unit. Overall, Ash's biggest issue compared to his peers is that he just doesn't get anything that really helps him stand out or add any unique identity to him, or even move him off the baseline standard in most cases. He has, for all intents and purposes, no personal ability, no crest, he's male and so can't take advantage of Pegasus Knight, he only has two boons and one budding talent in his skills, his base stats leave a lot to be desired, and his growths don't make up for this either. He misses both Battalion Wrath and Battalion Vantage in favour of Battalion Desperation, which is by far the worst of the three, and he misses most of the major combat arts that might make him more appealing, if not all of them to be honest. He doesn't get Vengeance or Swift Strikes or Point Blank Volley or anything of the sort, and he doesn't even get many utility tools such as Encloser or Break Shots or any rallies that might help him support his allies. He gets Shatter Slash and Waning Shot, which might be helpful I guess, but even the latter of those he gets so late that it's really past the point where its benefit would be maximised. Even something which would be incredibly minor, like a Might Support, he doesn't get one of those either, he misses here too. In almost every area where Ash could be given something to stand out or excel, he just isn't given the tools to do so. 
he can still go sniper and kill off enemies with hunter's volley on the player phase. He can easily reach wyvern and do basic wyvern things. The issue Ash faces is that most units can do this and also bring a lot more to the table at the same time. It's more a case of him taking advantage of these classes strengths rather than bringing anything extra to them. However, the one thing I really want to stress here is that whilst Ash is amongst the weaker units in the game and that is almost undeniable, he is by no means unusable. And whilst many of his fellow students are better options as units, it doesn't mean Ash can't be used. If you're looking for optimal play, then yes, there are better choices. But if you want to use Ash either because you just like his character or just fancy trying him out or for any other reason, he will be more than capable of contributing and holding his own in your party. With Ash being an archer who ends up on the lower places of tier lists, I think he gets lumped in with the likes of Will or Rebecca or Nemi or Rolf or other similar units from previous games, but it is always worth remembering that there is a huge difference between a character who struggles to actually contribute to beating the game and a character who is able to contend perfectly fine with the challenges of the game but is poor in comparison to his peers. And for me, Ash fits quite firmly into that latter category. Ultimately, the point of this series is to help you get the most out of the units that you want to use, not to tell you which units to use or which are the best or which are the worst. So if you do feel like giving Ash a go, I hope this breakdown helps you to get the most out of him. Thanks for watching.